we shall discuss advantages and disadvantages of this. So here I will write down some advantages. And on the other side of my screen, I will write some disadvantages. So what comes to your mind as advantages and disadvantages of this DB calculation? Any ideas? Yeah, this is definitely some advantage. So, um, very, very small um, or large values. Um, let's say powers, uh, and if this works for power, we can also use it for voltage current and so on. Uh, maybe I can also say U, I, and so on. Du, 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 du. And they all um, fit into yeah, maybe minus 200 dB if you have something very, very small to plus 200 dB. So, um, if you do radio astronomy and ve measure very, very, very small powers from a star that is thousands of light years and maybe millions of light years away, then uh, you might measure powers that are in this range of minus 200, maybe, maybe even a bit lower uh, dBm. And if you have um, a large nuclear power plant and measure the power output of the power plant, then you might have maybe um, what would be gigawatt. Giga is 10 to the power of 9. Um, so with respect to milliwatt, it would be a billion, right? 10 to the power of 12. So um, a nuclear power plant with 1 gigawatt output would be 120 dBm, if I calculate correctly. So there's still some space left for even larger powers than the output of a nuclear power plant. So very, very small and very, very large values can be fit into this handy range, let's say. This is definitely some advantage of calculating in dB. Is that the specific range? It can, of course, also go above. But if you have, so if you calculate somewhere something that is 1,000 dB or so, then it's probably the result or probably the calculation is wrong because 1000 dB is uh, yeah, too large. Too large. W would, be, would be 10 to the power of 100. And where, you, where do you have 10 to the power of 100 something? Okay, we started with some advantage, uh, which is good it should, if, if you discuss something and criticize something, you should always start with something positive. But now let's go for something negative. <laughs> it's, no, it's, it's not intuitive, it, it, as we have just seen. Uh, not intuitive. And it's probably, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, so we, we need to do this conversion, right? A conversion is necessary. We always need to convert back and forth Um, and the conversion itself includes calculating this logarithm or this decadic logarithm to be more specific and it also includes taking this 10 to the power of something. And as long as you have just powers of 10 um, that you insert here, then it's simple. As long as you have just integer numbers, you take 10 to the power of some integer number, then it's also no problem. It, it gets problematic if you have um, something that is not a power of 10 here, and if you have 10 to oh, 3.56 something, uh, then you cannot calculate it in your head anymore. And then it's just handy if you have uh, this factor of 2 is 3 dB, factor of 4 is 6 dB for powers, and so on and so on. Okay, uh, but we, we need to do some conversion. 
a conversion is necessary. Okay, more advantages or disadvantages. Exactly, so this is what we have seen, I think, on one of the slides before here. So if we multiply something on a linear scale, and multiplication is usually hard to do it in your head, um, it turns into a sum on the dB scale. And this is really, really handy. So if we would take a look at some example, um, yeah, so if we would take a look at some signal chain, for example, and let's say um, we have some some typical transmission. So um, I don't I don't know how to write it down in a good way, but let's say we have I, I will write like a like a block chart. So we have some source, and this generates us some signal, and then we feed the signal to some amplifier to amplify it. And then we have some antenna that uh, radiates the signal. And then we radiate it over a certain time, so there will be some path loss. Then we have a second antenna somewhere that will pick up the signal. The signal after the radio transmission will be quite small. So we have another uh, pre-amplifier, and then we might have a filter. Um, uh, for example, some, some, some band pass filter that will filter out the frequency components that we would like to have in our receiver. Um, and then there might be some, some mixer, or let's say here we have the receiver. Okay, and so now let's say we generate here a power of one milliwatt. The, the, the amplifier amplifies everything by a factor of 50. Um, so then we have some signal here. Here for the for the transmission, we 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 lose a lot. So we divide by I don't know twenty thousand or two hundred thousand. So we receive a very small power here. So once again, we multiply by a large factor. Let's say maybe five hundred, and then by the by this filter, we also lose let's say something like a factor of four. So here we divide by four, and the question is how much power do we get at the receiver. And now if you would need to do this calculation in your head, um, it can be very challenging. Or, or th the question is, maybe, maybe the question is vice versa. The question is, okay, we also need to have a milliwatt here. And then the question would be, how large should this amplifier be? Or how large must this amplifier be? So that at the end of our signal, chain yeah so I, I do radio transmission I, I want to get pick up a signal with my cell phone from the base station this is the base station this is the receiver chip in my cell phone this is the base station antenna this is the cell phone antenna and how large what amplification must the pre-amplifier in my cell phone have that if I'm I don't know two kilometers away from the base station that I, I get enough signal reception at the cell phone and if you would need to do this calculation just with these linear values in your head, it can be very challenging. So, but now if we do the same, do the very same in dB, um, one milliwatt in dB would, would mean no zero dB. If we express it in, in dBm, it would be zero dBm, right? Because it's just one milliwatt would be zero dBm. So. An amplification of 50 would be how many dB? I've, I've only used something like with 5, 2, and 4 in <laughs> my example here. Uh, you can also, of course, you can use your calculator, but uh, what, what should be the result? So this is the same as. 100 divided by 2. A factor of 100 is how many dB? 20 and div divided by 2 is minus 3, so this should be 17 dB. Okay, so um, yeah, d dividing by 200,000 
is minus 53 dB. So multiplying by 500. is plus 27, exactly. So dividing by 4. So, so here it should be minus because we divide by 4. It's like, okay. it's, like, it's like here. So this should be how many minus? Minus 6. So and then you can see it's, it's, it's now much easier. So 0 plus 17, okay, is 17. Let's do the plus first, plus. Uh, 27 is uh, 37 is 44. Um, okay, I'm not uh, not good in calculating my head. 44 minus 53 is uh, minus nine. Minus nine, right? Yeah. Minus nine and minus nine minus another seven is minus 15. So we end up here with minus 15 dBm. So. If we would, if this would be okay for our receiver, this probably would be okay. Um, if it's not okay, if we want to have one milliwatt, which corresponds to zero dBm, um, okay, then we somewhere we would need another 15 dB. So we could have another amplifier, maybe after the filter that adds 15 dB. Of course, without um, increasing the signal to noise ratio, so it should be some low noise amplifier. Um, or what we what you could also do, for example, um, we could use directional antennas and use antennas that have more gain and feed the power more into a certain direction. For cell phone communication, of course, it's not really handy because the base station usually does not know where you are. It, it cannot focus the power onto you. Okay, modern base stations can do this. So um, the idea of 5G and 6G networks probably is that the base station can focus power to you. Yeah, so if this 15 dB are missing, somewhere in the signal chain you have to add 15 dB. And it's, it would be probably very costly to do it on this side because you, here you already have high powers and you don't want to radiate too much power with your cell phone base station because um, it's not very efficient and not very economic. Um, so you might add another 15 dB on the low power level here on your cell phone or maybe use a high gain antenna, something like this. And you can see doing these signal chain calculations in dB then is very handy. You can just say, okay, I'm, I'm missing 15 dB. I could add uh, plus 5 dB here at this antenna, use a more gain antenna here, use another 5 dB here, and then have some additional amplifier here that gives me uh, another 5 dB, and then I'm fine. And it would be much more complicated to do it with, with the calculation on a linear scale. That's definitely some advantage on this dB scale. Um, multiplication turns into a sum, dividing division turns into, so uh, let's say, multiplication turns into plus and division turns into minus. Big, big advantage. Okay, more advantages or more disadvantages. More, yeah, what, whatever, whatever you like. Small, small changes are like difficult to see. Like small changes. Yeah, so th th this is, I think, something that we have already written down with this very small or large values. If you, um, if you display something on a dB scale, you are able to see small changes and also large changes. Um, it's it's some some outcome of this first advantage that we have already written down, but I would say um, logarithmic scaling in diagrams ca can be single logarithmic or can be double logarithmic. So 
this is definitely some advantage if you display something in a logarithmic scaling and this the scaling logarithmic scaling happens of course if you convert something into db um, remember what we discussed with the low pass filter for example that you can see the um, uh, the transfer function much nicer uh, if we would um, try to do this quickly in octave um, if you have a low pass filter i can go to my second page here um, how does a simple low pass filter look like so i have i have some input terminal i have some output terminal um, how could i build let's say from a from a resistor and a capacitor low pass filter i have some i have some series element and I have some parallel, some shunt element. Where do I need to place the resistor? Where do I need to place the capacitor? And hello to Dr. Quark. Do you have an idea how to build a low pass filter? In the shunt, here, here this, this must be the capacitor and this should be the resistor. And what happens here is that if you have low frequency signals, so here we have just resistance and here we have the impedance of the capacitor. And the impedance of the capacitor is? Um, let's see, is it one, over one over J omega C. Okay. Um, yeah, and you can have a question also for sure. So we have here the impedance one over J omega C. So if omega is our frequency, is our angular frequency, if the frequency is low, then the impedance here is high. So if we have a current, it's much easier for the current to go this path through our load instead of going through the capacitor. But if we go to high frequencies, one over something high is something small, impedance gets small. So we build a bypass, high frequency, currents will, will be short circuited and go back to the ground. And so we can, we could write down input voltage or output voltage divided by input voltage just with a simple voltage divider and could say, okay, the, the output voltage we get from this ZZ, so the, the partial impedance divided by the total impedance, right? This is how voltage, how a voltage divider works times the total voltage, with, which is the input voltage. Does, does this look familiar to you? Okay, so if we, if we do this in Octave and let's say we use um, so there, there's my mouse, found it. Um, so if we use Omega, um, let's say going from zero to 10. I, I just use normalized values. So let's say zero, 0 to 10, then um, Octave will use 100 values for this omega going from 0 to 10. Maybe we can use not uh, zero, uh, not, not 100, but 101. So then we have nice, nicer values. Okay, so now uh, I just set R to 1 and I set C to 1. And we can then calculate the ZZ, which is 1 over J times omega, oops, J times omega times C. And this, I think, won't work. Or, yeah, it, it, it says it won't work. We, we, we can't do this. Why, why does it not work? Who's the Octave MATLAB expert? You, you, ne you don't use MATLAB that much in your study, right? Or Octave or tools like this? You, you should. No one, no engineer in his real life uses pencil, paper and a calculator. Everyone uses such tools here and you need to be confident how to use them. So the problem is our omega here um, is some array, is some vector with this 100 values. And 
So you cannot, we cannot divide by some vector, we cannot divide by some array, and we don't want to divide by this array or by this vector, we want to do element-wise division, we want to divide by each element, and element-wise division works with the dot operator. So if we do this, now we get 100 values for the impedance of the capacitor. And so now I can, um, I can, I can write down our transfer function of the filter, which is this one here. So Zz divided by R plus, plus Zz. Um, and once again, this will also not, yeah, now this works, but it does not give a meaningful result because once again, the dot is missing. So if we do it like this, now we get transfer function of the filter. And because the impedance is complex, oh, and there's a very long question in the chat. <laughs> I will come back to this question in a second. Um, so now we get some, some complex result because our impedance is complex. And for the transfer function of the filter, we would just care about the magnitude. So how do I get magnitude? Ma magnitude of, of, of this here that we just calculated? What is the function to calculate magnitude in Octave or in MATLAB or in almost any other computing programming language in this world? No, we can we can try something like this, but I I I'm not sure if this says no Mac. I I, I don't know Mac. What is another name for the magnitude? Amplitude. Yeah, amplitude. Amplitude is more. You have something that oscillates, and then this is the amplitude. Ups. Ups. Absolute, absolute value. value. Yes, yeah, absolute. So it's apps, and then we get absolute values. And so now let's plot this. Let's plot omega and what we what we just calculated uh, and what we just calculated. Why does not work? What we just calculated, I will, I will call TF for transfer function. Okay, so let's plot omega and this transfer function. And then the result looks like this. So this is what our, what our, our low pass filter does. Low frequencies will get through, high frequencies will be attenuated. So now if we would draw a second order low pass filter, it's more complicated, we get a different function. Um, so yeah, and if we would go for higher frequencies, let's, let's do the very same and maybe go, f go up to 100 times our corner frequency and I will use more points. Yeah, so I get more values, I need to recalculate Zz. Um, escape the result and I need to calculate our transfer function once again. Um, I should have maybe also escaped the result and so now I can plot this once again. So then the plot looks like this. And you almost don't see anymore what happens here because now this is the, um, the pass band, the low frequencies and these are the high frequencies that get attenuated. So if we would convert our transfer function into dB or if we would just use not plot but log log, uh, logarithmic scaling of the frequency axis, logarithmic scaling of the amplitude axis, then it looks much nicer, it looks much more um, comprehensible. Uh, so we have the pass band, sickness gets through without problems. Here is somewhere we have the corner frequency and everything goes down then by, if you yeah, have 10 times the frequency, the ampli amplitude drops by, by a factor of 10. And a factor of 10 for current and voltages, I mean here we dealt with voltages, is factor of 10 is how many dB? 20. And that's why I usually say, okay, if you have a first order low pass filter, amplitude will drop down by 20 dB. Okay, and if I would use slightly more points, escape the result, once again calculate this Zz, calculate our transfer function and plot, no, log log plot again. Yeah, so then um, we really get a really nice diagram on this, how this first order low pass filter works. 
there are some error messages here in the window because we still have a frequency of zero and frequency of zero of course cannot be displayed on a logarithmic scale but um, you, you get the idea this is not some real advantage of the db scale but let's say of this logarithmic scaling um, with this logarithmic scaling you can show large values and small values and the differences between them in the very same diagram because we use this advantage here that we discussed that we can display very small or very large values. Okay, I, I will, um, there's a question from some person in the chat, Dr. Quark. So I will read the question so that you also already know the question. So my question is a bit complex as it goes for electromagnetism and material science. Okay, so just for the magnetic part, if I would have a beam of ferromagnetic material inside a high, in, inside a high coil providing high magnetic flux, if the beam is longer than the coil, it should stabilize in the middle of the magnetic field. The one assumption that the coil is long enough, now the magnetic field should make concentric force on that beam. Correct. Hmm. Difficult question. I, I think I cannot answer it and will not answer it now. Uh, this, is, this is something that needs further discussion, I would say. There's some, uh, we would need to draw a schematic how the coil looks like and how the beam looks like. And I'm not sure if I'm an expert to answer this question. Uh, maybe, maybe not. It, it does not, for me, seem to be super related to EMC. Uh, maybe you can drop me an email, send me, um, send me a schematic, then I might think about this. Okay, so we have found three advantages. Uh, do you have another disadvantage? Um, one, one, one comes to my mind um, if we look at the, at the first slide where we did calculations here today, uh, wh wh what could be some further disadvantage? It requires reference values. We need to have reference values, good point, and we need to make sure if it's 10 or 20 that we use for the conversion. So, um, reference value. Needed and um, 10 versus 20 in front of this decadic logarithm. Okay, some, yeah, some last advantage or disadvantage. Um, remember, like not absolute, like the yeah, so th this is, this is some, some disadvantage that we also had. We cannot have direct uh, summation, right? We could not have 30 dBm plus 30 dBm. This would not make sense. So we would need to convert to linear values before, then we can calculate the sum, and then we need to convert back. So no direct summation, because summation on the dB scale is really um, multiplication on the linear scale. And that's why I, I will not write down no statistics, but statistics, if you calculate averages, if you ca calculate standard deviations, um, it's challenging, it, it's, it's, conf it's also confusing. You get strange results. Um, maybe some disadvantage, uh, maybe, maybe some more advantage if I go to my preview here in the um, OBS streaming, you also some see some DB here for the audio level, for example. So why, why is DB here used for the audio level? And if I'm quiet for a second, now you can see how the level goes down to minus 40 something dB and we just have then the remaining noise of the room from the projector and stuff. And if I speak up very loud, then we almost go up to this zero, zero dBm there, uh, which is the limit of the scale here. So why are these audio signal levels also expressed in dB? 
it's it's kind of a standard, but of course standards uh, storm, uh, sh should have a meaning, should be meaningful. So why it's a meaningful standard to express audio signal levels also in dB? Because our ears also work on this logarithmic scale, we are able to. Yeah, if I'm if I'm once again uh, if I'm quiet for a second. Yeah, you can hear the noise of the projector. You, I think you can hear the noise of the heating system. So we are able to to hear very very small signals. And even if I speak up very loud, then you're still able to catch this, and your ears don't get the destroyed by this. So. Um, yeah, corresponds to the human sense of um, audio or of yeah, of acoustic pressure of light intensity and um, and some more, as as we've discussed in the lecture. Okay, um, yeah, and maybe some last disadvantage. And then there's another short question in the chat. I will come back to this in a second. Uh, a last disadvantage um, here, somewhere we have done this conversion. Right, remember, remember this formula here and our power level, our power that we have right now was this 10 microwatt or so and this would convert into the uh, minus 20 db so now if i do the conversion formula and if i have a power of zero or if i if i set the power to zero because i have zero power um, and try to calculate this power level of zero does not work because you cannot express, you cannot calculate the logarithm of zero. So we cannot express something that is zero on, on a dB scale. Same happens if I have, if I would have a negative voltage, right? We had this voltage level somewhere in the corresponding formula. Um, so if I set the voltage to, I don't know, minus 10 volt and try to calculate this voltage level okay then i get something but the result is complex so now i would get some complex db which also does not make sense so we cannot and if i would insert some complex voltage into the db like a complex phasor complex voltage phasor complex current phasor or complex power into the um, into the conversion formula you get no meaningful results so uh, maybe some last advan uh, disadvantage that we can note down. So, um, no zero, no negative or complex values. Um, input values, let's say. Francesco, do you have something to add? Yeah, also in MATLAB, when when you find some value that is uh, to the power zero, to the power of minus nine, something similar, mm -hmm. it's minus infinite. So there is a limit also in MATLAB. You cannot work with the so small value because in logarithmic scale, it's minus infinite. Yeah. And yeah, and sometimes in MATLAB, so um, of course what MATLAB does is just floating point calculation. Um, and sometimes you have in MATLAB very, very small values. I mean, this would be, be another topic for another exercise to deal with a little bit. But let's say if you have, if you have one and if you add, as we have done before, so to the one you add one to the power of minus three, for example, the, the E is missing. So this works. Um, if we have one and add 10 to the power of minus six, okay, this also works, but the, um, the display is too short to show the results. So I can change the format and go to format long 
and do this calculation once again, and you can see, okay, there is this one there. So let's go and say, okay, one plus 10 to the power of minus 15. Okay, this is the last one there. One plus 10 to the power of minus 16. Okay, and then the result is one, once again. And so this is, th this, this can be strange because now this, um, this 10 to the power of minus 16 is somehow omitted by the calculation in MATLAB. And so this sometimes can give you strange results. For example, if you do 1 minus 1 plus 10 to the power of minus 16, so what would you expect? What do we get? 10 to the power of minus, 10 to the power of minus 16, right? And we get 10 to the power of minus 16. So, but we have all learned in school that in the summation, it, the, the order does not matter. So it should not matter if I do 1 minus 1 plus 10 to the power of minus 16 or if I do 1 plus 10 to the power of minus 16 minus 1. So wh what, would, what would you expect? What, what should the result be? 10 to the power of minus 16. But, but if I do the calculation, the result is 0. Because this 10 to the power of minus 16 is somehow swallowed by the 1 and then it does not matter anymore. Yeah, and so you can check this the accuracy in the MATLAB and in Octave and in all these uh, tools. There's some some command EPS, which is the calculation precision of the yeah, uh, relative spacing between any adjacent numbers and so on and so on. And if you have something that is considerably smaller than this, then usually it's a rounding error. You can neglect it in your calculations, or it it might be swallowed by another number in your calculation and you need to be um, you need to take care of this okay and so then the last question in the chat there can be some sort of oscillation from the rc low pass based on the type of load and okay but it's a long time when i was able to calculate this so this command uh, or this comment refers to our low pass filter that we have drawn here and of course if we have some capacitor here and if we would have an inductive load what might happen we build an lc resonant circuit and there might be some oscillation between the the capacitor in the filter and some inductance in the load but okay here in, in this simple example we did not care about this but it's a it's a good comment good question uh, dr quark 